Hey friends, welcome back to my kitchen. Welcome to another weekly meal prep. It feels so good to get back into the swing of things. This past month had so many different activities and things going on with our children that I just really got out of the rhythm with doing my weekly meal preps. But I'm back at it and I'm so excited to be sharing these menus with you all and hopefully you can get some inspiration for your own family. Monday, we're starting off the week with a sheet pan type meal. You all know how much I love those. So on the sheet pan, we're going to do some dinner sausage. I had shown you all some of the sausage I like to get at Costco in one of my last grocery hauls. So we're going to combine that with Brussels sprouts. We'll put that onto a sheet and put it in the oven and kind of do most of the baking part of it. And then whenever I go to reheat it, I may put it back on a sheet or I may heat it in the microwave. I may heat it in a skillet. It all just depends on how much time I have the night that we eat this meal. And to go along with it, I'm also making a loaded potato salad that has some really good flavor combinations. So I was getting the potatoes peeled and cut a little bit smaller and put in to a pot on the stove. So for that loaded potato salad, I wanted some bacon bits. We're gonna go for like a bacon Parmesan kind of flavor. It turned out so delicious. So my favorite way to make bacon is to put it into my air fryer. It's just super mess free. It's easy to clean out when I'm done and I really can put it in there and not really worry about it. I was enjoying some peppermint tea this morning while I was prepping all of this stuff. It was kind of cold outside, so it was fun to be in the warm kitchen getting meals ready for my family. So here I'm just getting out the Brussels sprouts and I know some people like to roast them whole. Personally, I feel like they're a little more bite-sized if I cut them in half. And if they're really large Brussels sprouts, sometimes I do cut them in fourths as well. And I'm just putting them into a bowl and then I will mix the oil in the bowl with them. There is times I have put them into a Ziploc bag. If you don't have a really big bowl and you're short on bowls, whenever you're making this or meal prepping, using a Ziploc bag works out really well because you can kind of squish the veggies around in there and get them really covered with the oil. So I just like to drizzle some oil in. I stir it around really well. And no surprise here, if you watch often, I'm adding the buttery steakhouse seasoning. This is my go-to veggie seasoning. I use it in mashed potatoes. I use it in so many different things. So I'm adding that to the Brussels sprouts and then I just stir everything until all of the leaves look nicely coated with the oil and begin to look a little bit shiny. I decided to just put a piece of parchment paper on the bottom of my sheet pan. It just helps with cleanup and nothing gets super stuck on the bottom then. Then I'm laying out the sausages. I think these were the roasted garlic flavor. They're really, really good. And I was thinking that we could even cut them up and maybe mix them in with the Brussels sprouts and sort of eat it all together. Generally, when I serve Brussels sprouts for dinner, we make a good garlic butter to dunk them in and just go all out to make it super yummy. I threw that sheet pan into the oven and then at this point my bacon was done and ready to come out of the air fryer. I'm always amazed at how great the bacon is when it comes out of the air fryer. It's just the perfect crispness and it's so good and I had to have some while I was working. And at this point my potatoes were also finished and at the texture I wanted them. You don't want to boil the potatoes too long for potato salad because they can get really soft and then you're gonna end up with mashed potatoes. I have been loving making my own mayo, but I had some of this Aldi brand mayo in the refrigerator that needed to be used up, so I decided to go ahead and just use that in this potato salad. I added some yellow mustard, a few drops of stevia. You could always add sugar to this as well. I just like to sneak in using stevia where I can, especially in something like this where you really wouldn't 
be able to tell if it's sugar or stevia. And then I diced up very, very, very finely a onion, about half of an onion. And I think that potato salad needs onion. It's one of the traits of potato salad that makes you recognize that taste is that it's got some good onion in it. So here's my little twist, and that is adding in some parm. The bacon and the parm together was so delicious. Even my husband was commenting about how good it was. And I just added some freshly ground black pepper as well. And I like to stir everything together to get the sauce kind of mixed up before adding in the chunky items like the potatoes and the bacon. I also put in some rice vinegar just to give it a little tang. Rice vinegar is so subtle. I love that about it. It's not too overpowering and it made the combination of these flavors just perfect. I added the potatoes and then I'm going to chop up the bacon. Potato salad or really any cold salads are a place for you to explore different flavors, especially if you've made pasta salads and other cold salads for years start getting creative try out adding a different cheese or even feta cheese is really great in pasta salads um or think of nuts or dried fruit or there's so many ways to bring new flavor combinations to existing recipes and this one here i just kind of threw together with what i had and was tasting as i went to know what to add to it. And potato salad is one of those things that is often better once it sits overnight or maybe a day or two in the refrigerator. So it works out perfect as a meal prep item and a great side for all kinds of meals. So at this point, my Brussels sprouts were done and as you can see, they're not crazy crispy, which I was kind of pulling the sheet pan out before it was truly done. If we were ready to eat this right away, I would have left it in a bit longer, but knowing that I was going to be heating it up for a meal, I just decided I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of stop it before it was quite there. Okay, so that was Monday's meal. Tuesday, we are gonna be doing chili soup and sandwich melts, and I'm going to be making some sourdough later in this week, so we will use that for our sandwich melts and probably some pulled chicken that I'll take out of the freezer, or I also have canned pulled chicken as well. So I wanted to whip up this beanless chili. If you've been around for a long time, you know that in the winter times, I make this chili, and I don't have crazy measurements for it, but it's always pretty much the same combination of things. I just have some ground beef, some onion that I cut up, I added some salt and pepper, and I like to cook that in the bottom of my pot. Preferably a Dutch oven, that's what I mostly use for pots and kettles on the stove, but I put the lid on so that it helps to soften the onions as it cooks, and I just kind of chop up the meat into small pieces that will be great for in chili. So now along with that, I'm going to add in some bell pepper and usually I like green bell pepper in this recipe, but I didn't have any on hand and I did have some of this orange and yellow bell pepper in the freezer that I had sliced up. So I just went ahead and cut it up. And my little tip with frozen peppers is to cut them or dice them into small pieces while they're still frozen. They can be a little challenging to cut if they get too soggy. So definitely cut them before they've completely thawed. Then I added in a pint jar of some diced tomatoes and an eight ounce jar of tomato sauce. All that hard work in the summertime with all of the tomatoes pays off so much on these cold winter days when you want some chili and you get to enjoy it from tomatoes that you processed yourself. It's so rewarding. So after that, I'm just going to let it all kind of simmer and then we're gonna add in a few other ingredients, including a bag of frozen cauliflower rice. That's kind of what I use to bulk up this recipe since it doesn't have the beans in it. And then I added in a tablespoon of chili powder 
and I'm going to taste it and just make sure that it has enough salt and pepper in it. Definitely want to test that out. I'm adding in some of my frozen garlic cubes that we made together a few videos ago. They have been so handy as you're going to see throughout this video. If you wanted to amp up the heat on this recipe, you could also put in a little bit of cayenne pepper just to make it a spicy chili. We have little ones in the house that don't care for stuff that's too spicy. So I have to make sure that it's scaled back a bit, but sometimes Corey and I will put some cayenne or a little bit of the red pepper flakes in our bowl just to amp up that heat, especially on a cold winter day. So Wednesday, we are going to do a grilled lemon pepper chicken loaded mushrooms and garlic green beans. We have been really going hard on the garlic green beans around here. I don't know what it is. It's just been one of our staple sides in the last couple of weeks. So I just put a little bit of avocado or olive oil in to my cast iron. I throw in a couple of those cubes of the minced garlic and then I put my frozen green beans on top of that and I let everything cook. It takes a little bit of time. It's not very instantaneous, but if I'm cooking other things, I can kind of let it go in the background and stir them every once in a while. Next, I'm focusing on the loaded stuffed mushrooms. I just have some fermented probiotic laden cream cheese. I always love using that brand of sour cream and cream cheese because I know that it is fermented. And then I'm adding in some smoked paprika and some onion powder. Kind of went simple with these. Sometimes I add a lot of ingredients and other times I just find something simple to put in. These are so good and they're such a wonderful side for a picnic, for a winter meal, just any time. So I'm just taking the stems off of some mushrooms. I'm laying them with the hollowed out portion facing up. And then I just take a spoon and put that cream cheese mixture inside. So I wanna tell you how I'm prepping these. I'm gonna be putting them in the oven until the mushroom is starting to bake and I'm sm starting to smell the aroma in the kitchen. Then I'm gonna pull them out and top them with my cheese and a little bit of chive. And then on the day that I actually eat them or we make them, I'm going to put them back in the oven and just pretty much let them heat up, let the cheese melt and then it just doesn't take as long to bake them on the day that we're gonna eat this meal. So now I am prepping my lemon pepper chicken. I had two lemons that had been hanging around in my refrigerator long enough and needed to be used for something. And I really wanted to make a good grilled marinated chicken this week. So I was like, well, we can get these lemons used up. So one of them I juiced and I'm gonna add the juice into my marinade. The other one I'm slicing up. I'm gonna put that in and then we can actually grill those or put them on the chicken as they grill on our smoker. So we're gonna add the lemon juice. I'm gonna put in a little bit of rice vinegar, a little bit of avocado oil, and then I also have a lemon pepper seasoning from Kinders and I found that at Costco as well. And I'm just going to put that all in and I like to put that into these vacuum seal bags because number one, I can kind of take my hands and massage the marinade into the meat, but then also I can vacuum seal it. And anytime you vacuum seal a meat um, that's in marinade, you're actually helping the marinade go into the meat. It's helping it to kind of suck the marinade against that meat. And you can actually marinate a little quicker that way as well. You don't have to wait quite as long. So I love doing that. And once my green beans have softened up to where I'm happy with them, I will put in a nice block of butter, melt that in, stir it around, and then we are good to go with our garlic green beans. They are so good. I feel like I can eat them like potato chips or something, like a snack, and my daughters can too. We just really, really love them. So here I'm topping the stuffed mushrooms off with a good raw cheddar cheese and some of my chives that I actually freeze dried from my garden during the summertime. 
I love that I get to pull in some summer flavors even on cold days like this day. Thursday, we are going to do a steak and broccoli stir fry with rice. So I wanted to go ahead and get the rice started. I have been really liking this brown rice. I know I've been talking about Costco a lot in this video, but for some reason, a bunch of the things I'm using this day are from Costco, but this is an organic brown rice from Costco that we've been really liking lately. And I just went ahead and cooked that up with some of my homemade chicken broth. And oh, I just love rice made and homemade chicken broth. It tastes so, so delicious. So I'm gonna get that cooking while I mix up the stir fry. So we get our own beef locally. And for some reason, this last time that we got beef, we got a lot of chipped steak. And a lot of times we make chipped steak sandwiches similar to like a Philly cheesesteak sandwich. But I was trying to rack my brain on other ways we could use this chip steak. So I was thinking it would be a really good protein in a beef Asian inspired stir fry. So I used some coconut aminos. They are a soy free soy sauce type flavor and some sesame oil and some rice vinegar again. And then I also put some of my ginger cubes where I have minced ginger that is frozen and also some of my garlic cubes. And I just took a fork and kind of smashed them up and that worked perfectly. You can also add in some brown sugar to this. I used a brown sugar alternative. I don't think I filmed putting it in, but I did put it in this as well just to give it that kind of sweet Asian flavor. And then I took all of the chip steak out of the packaging and pulled it apart and then I mixed in my broccoli. And I did take into account that the broccoli is frozen and it probably will let some water into this marinade as well. So I know it's gonna have a little more liquid than what it currently does putting it into the freezer bag. And again, I am using a vacuum bag on this marinade as well just to help keep all of those juices up against the meat and even to help marinade the broccoli as well. Fridays is a really busy day for us. A lot of times we have homeschool group activities and other things like that. So it's a good day for me to do a slow cooker meal. So this is going to be down the line of a dump and go meal. I actually got a frozen roast out of the freezer and I purposely did this the rest of my meats I had gotten out the day before you know made sure they were thawed out and all of that but this particular piece of meat I wanted frozen because I knew I was going to use it later in the week so it can slowly thaw out in the refrigerator with the other things I'm putting in there and kind of marinade in the refrigerator and that's one thing to take into account is when you're going to be using your meals you know how long can they last in the refrigerator some meals can last longer than others those are all things that are important to really think about when you're planning out your weekly meal preps so this is one way to allow a piece of meat to be ready, be ready to be put into the slow cooker, but also to slowly thaw out throughout the week and gain some extra flavor by marinating as well. And then I just put a stick of butter in, chopped up. I put an onion, or I think half an onion sliced. And then I just put some steak seasoning in there as well. And as it thaws, it will cling to the sides of that piece of meat and it's gonna be excellent. So my bonus project for this week, and I try to incorporate something extra every week. Through the summertime, a lot of preserving happens, but there are always those odds and ends, little projects that you can work on during the colder months as well. And this is one of them, and this one is so easy. And this could potentially be one of the easiest preservation projects that there is, and that is making cranberry juice. It's so, so simple. So I actually am making this batch without sugar. I may do some more in a few weeks with some sugar, but my main reason in using this was for the vitamin C and when we're sick. 
and so I want to be able to, to just add stevia or something like that instead of a lot of sugar. So I put two cups of the cranberries into the jar and then I just added water up to the neck and I'm going to put the lids on, screw the rings on, finger tight, and put them in a water bath for 20 minutes. Now, this is a project that you definitely don't want to do on the day that you need it because it does have to sit for a while. I probably will let this sit for six weeks. If you do sugar, you may be able to drink it sooner, but since there is not going to be sugar in these jars, I'm going to probably let these sit for four to six weeks at least um, before we get into them. And I just want to make sure that the juice has really extracted as much as possible out of the berries. And they are so pretty, aren't they? This time of year, you can find cranberries on great sales. That's why I wanted to include this in this video because through the holidays and after the holidays, it is just a good time to do cranberry juice because it often goes on sale, especially after Thanksgiving. They're on sale stores are trying to get rid of them, whatever they have left, and you can take that all home. And you don't even have to do it right away. You can throw those bags right in the freezer and then on a winter day when you have nothing else to do, <laughs> um, you can make yourself some cranberry juice. And it's just an easy little project. You don't even need a pressure canner. You, all you need is to water bath it. So I hope that this video was inspiring to you all. I know that you all have been wanting more weekly meal preps and that's what I've got coming because I want to be able to get on the ball with that. Our family eats so much healthier. We're more consistent with sit down dinners and everybody's just healthier and happier when mama is meal planning and meal prepping. So don't forget to subscribe. If you are new here, give this video a like, leave a comment below, and I will see you all in my next video.